السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم has a status that is higher than entire creation it is sealed, it is intact and there is nothing that anyone can ever do on earth to change that no matter what anyone says or does it will never ever reduce the status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If anything, it will elevate the status. Wallahi, history has proven that every time people tried to degrade the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they only degraded themselves and their children became Muslim. So it is one of the first stages when the enemy is about to be introduced to the beautiful prophethood of the greatest of creation and the beautiful religion of Islam, they start off by swearing, cursing, falsely accusing, etc, etc. And then either them or their children turn to the truth at some point. Let me give you the examples. Let's start off right at the beginning. And before I even start with the first example, it is the sunnah of Allah. We do not need to become violent in order to spread the truth of Islam. We need to study the truth, the reality from the very beginning. Don't you agree? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not need you and I in order to defend him, although we consider it an honor. And inshallah, within what he has taught, we would definitely defend his honor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So here goes my brothers and sisters. Right at the beginning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came down from the Mount, Mount Hira, when Jibreel, had come to him with prophethood and he told his wife some words. Her name was Khadija binti Khuwaylid radiyallahu anha. He said, Zammiluni. Do you remember those words? He says, cover me, envelop me and so on. Immediately she covered, she hugged, she embraced, she heard the story and she believed it. Guess why? Because she knew him. Those who don't know him won't believe. But she knew him. So when you know someone, you can immediately vouch for them. You can literally put your head on the block for them. This man, I believe him. That was a wife. I stopped for a moment. A different topic. How many of us, our wives would believe what we said? Subhanallah. Look at the relationships we have today. The sunnah. Even if you were to be telling your wife where you were last night, she won't believe you. That's how bad it has become here today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good understanding. Let's go back to our topic. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at some point started spreading the message when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anthir. O you enveloped, O you who is covered, subhanallah, get up and give them the warning. The warning of what? Stop misbehaving. Stop doing bad things. Stop worshipping deities besides Allah. Stop all the evil that is happening and become upright. That is the message of Islam. Subhanallah. He got up in Mount Safa. He was known as as sadiq Al-Amin, the truthful, the trustworthy by his own people. And when he got up on Mount Safa and he gathered the people of Quraysh, they were mostly his relatives. If you come from a certain village and your forefathers were from the same village, chances are the majority of the village related to you, either near or a little bit distant. But they would know you and your forefathers. They knew the man. What happened? He gets up and he says, Oh my people, I warn you of a severe punishment that is to come. And he spoke to them about worshipping Allah alone and the day of reckoning. And immediately one person who was influential got up. And what did he say? Tabbalaka ya Muhammad ali hadha jama'tana. Woe and destruction be to you, O Muhammad. Is this why you gathered us? You want to steal the seat from us. You want to become the leader. You want money. You want women. You want this. You want power. And so many accusations. Primarily, he said, destruction upon you. Did any destruction come to the Prophet ﷺ? Were those statements anything besides destruction against the one who uttered them? So this is why immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surat Lahab. In Mecca, beautiful verses. This man says, Tabban laka, ya Muhammad. A'udhu billah. Allah says, Tabbat yada abi wa tab ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. 
سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد We need to go back and look at the meanings of those verses. Insha'Allah. The next time you pick your phone up, go to the translation of the Quran and check Surah Lahab. Allah is saying destruction be upon both hands of Abu Lahab. And the children of Makkah memorized these beautiful verses and they began to sing them. They began to say them. Those who were Muslim, those who were not Muslim. Initially, there were very few Muslims. Most of the people of Quraysh at the beginning denied the message. Many of them insulted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many of them intended to insult the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They went to war against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I take you to Ta'if, my brothers and sisters, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were pelting him with stones and the most sacred blessed blood happened to actually drip in Ta'if. And here is the messenger. He was calm. Why was he calm? He knew who he was. He knew there is a calmness in my heart. I am sent for a purpose. Here is the purpose. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a rahmah, as a mercy for entire creation. Al-alameen, meaning the worlds, all the species, everything. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have been sent as a mercy. It is against the quality of a person sent as a mercy to depict, to portray, to live by anything besides that which stands for mercy. Subhanallah. So what did he do in Ta'if? Let me explain. Not you and I, not human beings, not his companions. He was there in Ta'if alone, subhanallah. The angels came to him and told him, we will crush these people if you just give us the instruction. He says, Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. Oh Allah, guide my people. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know. Subhanallah, they don't know. Imagine when you know, and you know that you know, and you know that they don't know. How do you feel? It was not a point of arrogance. It was humbleness, humility. He was calm. He prayed, Oh Allah, if they are not going to accept the deen, at least keep from their offspring those who will embrace Islam. Go to Ta'if today. You will find from the citizens there, there are, there are no non-Muslims. Not at all. What was that? It was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah tells him something. It used to hurt his heart when Abu Sufyan, Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraiq, Abu Jahl, and the others used to say bad words about him. They used to spread accusation. He is a womanizer. Astaghfirullah. And on what grounds? There was no grounds at all. His wife was much older than him. He had a wife, Khadija bint Khuwaylid radiyallahu anha. They started spreading rumor, which was unfounded completely. They say where there is a smoke, there should be some sort of a fire. Absolutely nil, zero. They said he was after the seat, which means he wanted to take power. What power? Subhanallah. He was the most humble. He was the most calm person. He was just and fair. He respected everyone. Subhanallah. He stood up for the rights of women at the time when women were bought and sold at will. Subhanallah. So it used to hurt him. Why did it used to hurt him? Not personally. Remember that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his wife Aisha later on, radiallahu anha tells us, من تقام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لنفسه قط. Never ever did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم retaliate or react because he was for himself being abused or harmed or mocked at for his own right. He never reacted, but he only reacted for the right of Allah. سبحان الله. سبحان ربي الأعلى. For himself, why didn't he react? I'm going to get to that. There is a specific verse in the Quran that tells us the reason. So at this point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew his heart was hurting. Obviously, if someone swears you every day, your heart will hurt. You and I are not prophets. If someone swears you or your mother or your father, what might you do? Oh, I don't even want to say we are sitting in Mayfair. They say it is a hot bed. I don't want to talk about it. Don't even try to swear someone's mother, especially in this area. Allahu Akbar. One wonders why, what might or might not happen. I don't think anyone would tolerate it easily here. So, for us, we are human. We are not prophets. He is a prophet of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
greatest of creation. Listen to the quality. Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you are upon the best, the highest, a great level of character, conduct. Anyone on earth wants to learn character, they need go no further than Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the life, in the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is that for every one of you to emulate. It is an example. His life is an example for us to follow. But for who to follow? لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Three things. Whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah, and whoever is conscious of the last day, the day of judgment, and whoever remembers Allah often for them, they will follow that beautiful example. So Allah tells him, We know that it hurts you what they are saying. That's what Allah is saying. We know, we know what? It pains you what they are saying. Do you know why? Not for himself, but because they were denying the message. Imagine a truthful man coming to you with the truth and telling you the truth and you are making a mockery of yourself by denying in such a derogatory way. You know, if you deny respectfully, perhaps one might not be that hurt to say, inshallah, the truth will come to this person because they are respectful. Let's engage them. Let's talk to them. But when you deny with disrespect, it will pain a genuine person who cares for you. And there is none who was more caring than the Prophet Muhammad He was so caring. He wanted deen and goodness for everyone. Harisun alaykum. He was desperately wanting the goodness for everyone. That's one of his qualities. That's why he kept talking to the enemies as well. He kept trying. He forgave so much. But here comes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, we know that it hurts you what they are saying because they are denying the messenger. They are denying the messenger. If Allah sends a messenger to give you the Quran, and Allah says, go and give them the Quran. If they did not take the Quran, wouldn't it hurt you? Oh Allah, you gave me one task to do and I'm trying to do it. But look, they're not accepting. That's what was hurting the Prophet So Allah says, we know that it hurts you what they are saying. And then Allah continues to say, we want you to know, they know that you are speaking the truth. Allahu Akbar. La yukadhibunak. They don't belay you. They know in their hearts, Islam is the truth. The teachings are the truth. Worshipping your own maker and none other than your maker alone is the truth. Muhammad is the truth. Sallallahu alayhi wa His message is the truth. What Jesus may peace be upon him. Isa alayhi salam brought is the truth. Musa alayhi salam what he brought was the truth. They know it. They know it very well better than they know their own children according to the Quran. Sometimes they don't even know their own children. It's a fact. When I read that verse many years ago, they know it as they know their children. And one of the scholars said that they know it better than they know their own children. And I was thinking, why would he say that? And now with this issue of lineage, people don't even know their own children. They have to do a DNA test and hold their breath to find out what's the result. May Allah forgive us. So Allah says, they know what you are saying is the truth. But the wrongdoers, the sinners, the oppressors, they are just denying the verses of Allah for whatever reason. Their reason was they were scared we will lose money. They were scared we will lose our seat. We will lose our chair, our power. They were scared that we will have to agree someone else is higher than us. They scared we will lose this and lose that. For material reasons, they denied the Prophet ﷺ. But in their heart, they knew this is the truth. Now, what did they do? They started mocking, accusing and doing whatever. Slowly but surely, one by one, they started accepting Islam. Their children came and saw this is the messenger. People who interacted with him, they said this is the messenger. They said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna ka abduhu wa rasooluh. Many occasions, people who hated him, when they interacted with him a little bit and got to know him, they said, I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are indeed the messenger of Allah. That's what they said. Now let's get to the verse that I was talking about at the beginning. The reason why the Prophet ﷺ is very calm and he always was calm. And when he reacted and retaliated, more so with dua. And more so, yes indeed, when it comes to mockery, Allah says, 
Here's the verse, end of Surah Al-Hijr. إِنَّا كَفَيْنَاكَ الْمُسْتَهْزِئِينَ That's all you need to know. We have protected you totally from the mockery of those who want to mock. We have protected your reputation and we have protected your status completely. No matter what they do, they will not be able to touch your status. It is sealed. Done. إِنَّا كَفَيْنَاكَ المستهزئين. Those who want to do istihza, they want to make a joke, a mockery. They want to say bad things about you. Don't worry, we protected you. Every time they try that, them or their children will be introduced to Islam. They will be introduced to you and the beauty of what you stood for. And guess what? They or their children or later on will accept Islam. Now I want to go back to that evidence I was talking about. That all of the people at some point, when I say all, almost all, at some point, became Muslim. From the children of those who mocked, and even some of those who mocked. Look at Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. He took part in the battles. They murdered Muslims. There came a day when he said, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Messenger, what will happen to me? The Prophet says, Ya Khalid, inna al-Islam yajubbu ma qablahu. You accept Islam. Whatever bad you've done before is wiped out. Come. Subhanallah. He declared the shahada and he became a warrior for Islam. What were they doing? Not just a mockery. Not just jokes. But... They went to war against the Muslims and against the Prophet ﷺ. They actively wanted to kill him. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. What happened? He actively wanted to kill the Prophet ﷺ. Subhanallah, the hearts are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will change them at any time. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Remember that dua for you and I. Don't think I'm happy I'm a Muslim. No, shaitan will play with all of us. Constantly preserve and protect your deen. Constantly ask Allah to grant you the goodness and Allah will open your doors. Subhanallah. My brothers, my sisters, Allah says, Immediately after that verse where Allah says, we have protected your reputation, your status, your standing. You are the Nabi who we have chosen for you to be. That's who you are. No matter how much they say about you, it will not change anything. If anything, it will elevate your status further. And Allah says, the people who mock at you, they are the ones who worship deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, and I want to end with these verses, advice for all of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ too beautiful. Allah says, we know that your chest is being tightened because of what they say. This is a different verse from the first one I mentioned. This is at the end of Surah Al-Hijr. We know your chest is tightened because of what they are saying. Allah says, declare the praise of your Lord. Sabbih, bihamdi rabbik. You want to feel good about something? Say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar. There is nothing better than declaring the greatness of Allah. Allah says, praise Allah a lot. Sabbih, bihamdi rabbik. And prostrate. Do your salah. Prostrate often. Find yourself in sujood. Lengthen your sujood. Praise Allah even in your sujood. Be from those who pray. All of us need to know you want to combat a tightening of the chest because of what someone is saying, be it about you or about the messenger or about anyone else. Become steadfast yourself to start with. What's the point of barking about things and we are far away? A man with a bottle in his hand and a man who fornicating and he's busy telling you, I care about this and about that brother, care about that bottle and care about what you're doing to begin with. May Allah grant us goodness. Yes, I do know it is a flicker of Iman in the heart. But let that flicker become a proper torch. Let it become such that when people see us, they can see the reminder sent by the messenger straight on our faces and in the way we behave. Let's enact our salah and the praise of Allah. And thereafter, we have something where Allah says, worship Allah until the end, until death comes to you, until you arrive at the final point. Continue to worship Allah right up to the end. That's what Allah says. So these are the verses of Allah. Today, my intention was to honor the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although anyone who praises the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks in his favor or in honor is actually only helping themselves. 
The Prophet ﷺ's status is already the highest. And Allah will continue to elevate it every single time. That's why the hadith says, Man salla alayya wahidatan, sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever sends salutations and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, Allah will bless them ten times more. So who did it help? Remember to increase your salah ala nabi. Remember to increase the blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Keep it moist on your tongue. Allahumma salli ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallim. Minimum, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Repeat it so many times. Allah will grant you the calmness. My brothers and sisters, we are hurt by what is happening across the globe where people are trying. I say trying because they won't succeed. People are trying to make a mockery of this and that. They want to insult us. Remember to react in a way that would not create two problems out of one. But inshallah, it would help us. And soon, I promise you, just like the whole of Quraysh became Muslim at some point, just like the people of Ta'if became Muslim, just like the enemies of Islam turned to Islam, they will also turn to Islam in a very, very short space of time. And that is not difficult for Allah. It's very easy. It will happen. May Allah grant us steadfastness and guide the enemies of Islam towards the beauty of Islam.